Hey, it's Santa, guys. Oh, there's a little dog that really wants to see Santa. Maybe they're going for a ride on the sleigh. Oh, they're going to sit with Santa and take a picture. Good morning, everyone. We are all packed up, and it's time to leave the motel. Get back on the road in the good old Forerunner. It's a nice sunny day here in Kanora, and I uh, had a nice stay in the motel, got a nice sleep, and uh, got a decently early start here. I decided not to uh, even uh, bother. There's a kitchenette in there. I could have made breakfast, but let's go grab ourselves some delicious uh, fast food breakfast to go. Maybe uh, drive through Kenora, take a quick look in the daylight, and then uh, get back on that Trans-Canada Highway and start heading west, see how far we can get today. It's uh, sunny, but a bit chilly. It's minus 13 degrees Celsius today, but without wind, it's actually not bad. So uh, I'm gonna hop in and we'll hit the road. Museum. Got some trains out in front. Got a big Canadian Pacific engine and it's hauling a CP rail caboose. No service at the drive through Frozen day on the lake. And here's the story of the James McMillan tugboat. Think guys, Husky the Musky. Should we check the underpass? Here we go, guys. It's the fish you've been waiting for. Husky the Musky. I gotta say, if there's one thing uh, Northern Ontario likes, it's um, statues of giant fish. Hola! And here's the other side of Husky the Musky. On this cold December morning in Kenora. So there's a 
another fine tourist attraction that I'm the only person at. This is a hop-in tourist area in the summertime. I drove through here last summer and people come from all over to do recreation here. There's just so many tourists and campers and anglers. Kenora is really cool. There's a ton of these little lakes and rivers just throughout the whole area. I knew there'd definitely be less tourists in the winter, but I didn't know I'd be the only one at all these places. The motels I'm staying at, there's always been like either just me or me and one other person. I still haven't had breakfast yet. I see an A&W sign that says there's one, two kilometers that way. Yes, maybe we'll cruise through there on our way out of town. All right, got the phone plugged back in. I'm glad it came back to life while I was outside there. It died completely. And unfortunately, the phone was dead, so I couldn't fly my drone. I want to get some drone shots of the muskie in the bay there, but uh, the phone died in the cold. I'm just glad the phone came back to life so I can use the GPS and we can get back on the highway. I followed that sign and I did not see any A&W and now we're back on the highway. So luckily I put this butter tart in my pocket this morning. It was in the back of the truck and frozen. I think it's unthawed now. So I guess it's butter tart time until I can find something else. It's quarter after 11 now after our little uh, sightseeing tour in Kenora there. Admit. I call grandma's brand butter tarts from Walmart. I gotta admit they're pretty darn good. So we are now back on the Trans Canada. Been cruising for a little while. No sign of breakfast, but that's okay. Our first order of business is to pick a destination. We know we're going to be on this Trans Canada the whole way. It's just a question of how far we go. Now, pretty much the premium camping spot I was planning on hitting this trip is only two hours away near Winnipeg. And this is an issue because it's pretty wasteful to only spend two hours driving and stopping and setting up. And it's also an issue because um, in a couple of days, there's a big snowstorm headed towards Calgary or in Alberta where I'm at it. And uh, they're looking at a foot of snow coming down, which is pretty, pretty serious all at once. So there's a little bit of a motivation here to be moving a bit quicker instead of a bit slower. So I don't think I can stop and stay at this place. However, it's a pretty neat um, sort of public lands area, not too far off the highway. Um, it's called Reynolds Ponds. You can see small lakes that used to be like mining pits and they stock them with fish too. So uh, when I was out there this summer, it was quite the happening place. There is easily a couple of dozen people there at least. And it's a big area with all these lakes. You can camp all around the edges. So there was no shortage of space, but all kinds of people with ATVs. One guy says he was, one couple said they're pretty much living out there all summer. So I'm thinking even if I can't stay there, I'll, I'm gonna pop in just to see what's happening in the winter. I have a feeling a place like that, there's still gonna be people using it in the winter because it's pretty popular. And I believe you could probably ice fish there in the winter on those ponds too. Maybe we'll see some ice fishing. So we'll still stop in and check it out. That's like less than a couple hours away. 
and then we're gonna have to decide how far we're gonna go. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please help support the channel and hit that like button. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode.